Hello everyone, welcome to Micro Minute. My name is Marty Jobson and today, underneath the microscope, I'm going to be showing you this horrendous, somewhat disgusting and creepy insect thing that I found yesterday out in the garden. Let me show you under the desk camera to start with what I've got. So here it is. Look at that thing, isn't it gruesome? It's about four and a half centimetres long. Look, that's the size of my finger next to it. So it's quite a beast. And basically what happened was um, I just uh, had a friend around and we'd had a socially distanced podcast recording and I was standing next to the pond and I saw this. Now, this is a section of, it's actually flag iris um, leaf, a dried up leaf that was sticking out of the pond. And this was attached to it. And just nearby was the clue to what it was. I think I, I thought I knew what it was immediately I saw it, but just nearby was the clue to what it was, and it was this. Just nearby was this incredible creature um, that had literally just crawled up out of my pond, hatched out of this thing, and was sitting there kind of drying out its wings. I can show you a close-up of it, and it is, of course, a dragonfly. It's an emperor dragonfly and I managed to I literally had to I ran inside and got the camera and came back out and I was like snap 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 snap, snap. took loads of pictures of it it's an incredible creature but anyway um let's uh let's go back to let's go back to this and what I'm going to do is um we're going to look at this underneath the microscope because it deserves a bit of loving attention obviously this is literally just the shell so don't worry nothing's going to happen so let's pop this under the microscope uh, I'm going to go back to this Whilst I just get it positioned and then we can jump straight in. Now, this is probably the biggest thing I've um, I've actually put under the microscope, so to speak, for you. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to adjust the uh, illumination a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's all right. That's good. And uh, focus. So it's quite it, it, I'm not going to have to go in very close. But you can see here it is in all its sort of slightly gruesome detail. And basically what you have, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take, I'm going to change from a white background to a black background. And that will make uh, the camera, so the camera's getting a bit confused by the light levels. But you can see there's its head. It's really quite gruesome, isn't it? It's quite repulsive. There's its head. It's from nightmares, let's face it. And um, this is the leaf down here that it's clinging to with its little, ar little arms here. It's, and this is where it's burst out here. And these are some sort of, I don't know what this little, little white wiggly thing is. It's some sort of something that was attached to it. Uh, and it's burst out. And what it does is it sort of hunches its back and it comes out the back and sort of pulls itself out, pulls its head out, pulls its backside out. And then um, inflates its wings, it pumps liquid into its wings to inflate them and inflates the rest of its body and sort of changes its body shape. Because if I move down there, you can see when this thing was living in the water, and this, this is a dragonfly larvae, it lives in the water. Um, it's probably the biggest predator that you're likely to find in, in a pond, certainly in my pond, because I don't have any fish in there. Uh, and it's got these tiny little stubs of wings. I'm just going to go back to the sides. Um, if I change back to, oops, back. That slide. You, I mean, you can see quite how enormous its wings are here. I mean, there's huge wings here and this massive head, and this enormous long body here. And uh, I do that and it goes back. But all of that was crammed into this relatively tiny little thing. And the wings were just packed into there. And then they just must have, sort of origamied out as they just expanded. Quite extraordinary. Look at the size of its back end. It's huge. Okay, it looks like there's some sort of stingy thing on the back end, but there isn't. It's not it's not got a sting or anything like that. What it has got though is the most monstrous jaws. Because this thing is a is a ferocious predator. I mean uh, this thing I remember once when I was doing some ecology uh, as a student back in, I think I must have been doing A-level biology, and we went on a field trip, and um, we did some sort of pond dipping, and I caught one of these, and I was like, wow, and we put them all into a bucket, uh, all the things we caught, little insects and what have you, and one of these, we put them in a bucket, and then we got back in the the, va uh, the, the coach, and we went back to the, the laboratories at the field studies centre, and we pulled everything out to have a look at what we caught, and sort of identify them, and do drawings and, and stuff, and there was nothing in my bucket, except for this thing, 
it had eaten everything. These things are hugely voracious. Uh, I mean, dragonflies eat um, little insects that they catch on the wing mostly. But these things will take fish, small fish. You know, I mean, we're talking fish that are sort of three, four, five centimetres long, because this thing is four and a half centimetres long. I measured it just now. Um, it's got, let's, let's have a look at its jaws, if I can. Uh, probably best if I, I'm going to show you this way round. So, and I'm going to try and set it up um, so I don't have to hold it, because that's, so um, you can see if I sort of zoom in a little bit on it here, that you can see here, it's got some jaws here, okay, this is its eye, here's the front of its head, and it's got these jaws here, but actually these aren't its jaws. This is its bottom lip. And I need to zoom back out because this is so monstrous. You need to see it in all its glory. It's quite difficult. It's very sort of fragile. So it's sort of completely upside down, but you can invert it in your own head. So, OK, eyeball, head, there's its back, there are its wings here. And here's its mouth. OK, so this is its mandible. And this bottom, the very bottom bit that I'm centred over now, is the labium, which is the lower lip. And the lower lip is actually like a kind of a, a huge arm that can reach out because the bottom lip actually extends all the way back to here and then back, this bit here, all the way back up to here. And the whole thing can sort of detach and extend forwards, right forwards like this. And it, when it extends forward, it will extend forward a good another two centimetres. And at the end of that, there are a pair of sort of sharp pincers. So it can just stick this thing forward and grab onto, I mean, literally a fish, but anything that is smaller than it, quite frankly, and yank it back and then it can start eating it. So it's quite the most ferocious beast. It's got this huge, and it is, I mean, if you remember back to the Alien film, um, the horrendous kind of xenomorph alien, which has the tongue, that, and it's like that. It is just like that. If you see pictures of it, I can't obviously show you that because this thing is just a dried husk. But if you see pictures of it, it looks like something out of an Aliens film. That is, after all, where Geiger got his inspiration from, from just sort of insects, um, uh, these are the eyes and if you go back to the slide and they're, they're, they're big eyes because it lives in the water and it's a predator so it has to be able to see what it's going to try and catch if we go back to the slide though uh, one of the pictures I took they, these are the eyes of the, uh, the, the full grown adult this is a male actually the females have, um, have a, the emperor females have a, a blue this, this bit up here is all blue as well as the tail uh, the abdomen, the bottom of it. Um, but the eyes are enormous and they give it literally 360 degree vision because the eyes extend right up to the top of the head so it can see vertically. They extend right down here and because they're all bulbous, it can see below it as well. And obviously it can see straight forward and it can see behind itself because the eyes are these sort of bulbous things that stick out. These huge eyes that extend all the way wrapped around the head. Um, tiny little antennae and the feet. But let's go back to the star of the show, this horrendous thing here. Oops, um, I'm going to put it back up again so that we can see. So I'll show you there. And that's, this is the hole through which it's climbed when it climbed out. So these, you can see right down into sort of the inside of the shell here. Right, that's all I'm going to say here. I'm going to end on this, this creature here, which is just... I don't know whether it's, it's one of those things that I'm sort of, it's sort of gross fascination. It's kind of like, yeah, it's brilliant, fantastic. Okay, that's all I've got time for. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to know more about me, you can go to the YouTube channel where you will find all, there are 36, because we started with episode zero. I know this is episode 35, but there are actually 36 micro minute episodes. Um, uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, so that you find out and you can get the latest stuff. I have to, as always, say thanks to Zeiss, who give me the microscope so I can do all of this stuff uh, and live stream stuff. And if anybody's interested, uh, do get in touch because I am now doing sort of live shows, bespoke shows for people 
for live festivals and for school. Yeah, it moved. It's not alive. It just there's little breezes in here. I guarantee you, it's not alive. Um, right, and with that, that's all from me. Take care, uh, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.